What's going on everyone? My name is Tyler and welcome to my channel. In the previous episode, we talked about lexing and tokenization. In today's episode, we're going to get started by implementing just the types and interfaces needed so that way in the next episode, we can actually implement our parser from start to finish. So let's get started by implementing the types needed for our AST. I'm going to go in here and create a new file called ast.ts. And inside this file, we're going to lay out the different types of AST nodes that we're going to need to work with in a parser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export a type, and this is going to be called node type, and it's just going to contain a whole bunch of strings um, that will represent the different types of nodes we'll have. So we have a program node, we'll eventually have a numeric literal node, we'll eventually have an identifier node, we'll have a binary expression node. And in the way, way, way future, we'll eventually have things like call expressions. We'll have things like unary expressions. We'll have things like function declaration. And the list will go on. This will end up being probably 40 lines long with all of the different types that a programming language would have to implement, right? Function declarations, function assignment, this anonymous function um, expressions, variable uh, declarations, function declarations, um, import statements, right? While statements, if statements, there's a lot of things. But for now, we're just gonna focus on these four as these four are gonna be the first things we're gonna to wanna to know how to parse. So now that we have these different types that we wanna be able to support, let's start kind of thinking through what a program is. Well, by looking at our lexer, we can see a program really is everything in this file. So with that logic, a program must be an array of every single statement that's in this file. This is a statement, this is a statement, this is a statement, right? This is a function declaration statement. So a program contains an array of all of our statements. So let's get started by defining a interface for a statement. So exports interface, we're going to call statement STMT for short. And we're just going to say a statement has a kind of node type like so. So this is going to be what every single statement and expression inherits from. Now let's create a program statement. So we're gonna do exports interface program and it extends these statements like so. And it's gonna have the same kind as a program, right? But the important thing is the program is gonna contain a body which is just an array of statements. So this is how one of our nodes will look. A statement is kind of this type that we won't ever really use for its value. It's kind of like an abstract type in a language that supports um, uh, polymorphism in interfaces, but it's just an abstract type. We'll never actually use statement, but we need it to be inherited to, from. Next, let's implement um, all these different expressions. Now, an expression is not a statement, um, a keynote. Statements, um, keynote, statements will not return a value in our programming language at least. So in our language, something like let x equals 45 will not return a value of 45. Instead, most REPLs will actually return undefined. However, doing x is equal to 45, this is no longer a statement. This is an assignment expression. And expressions in our language return values. This is why in um, C, you cannot say something like let's let x equals if um, true, right, we say 45 else 55, right? This is not valid code in JavaScript or in something like C. However, in Rust, this is valid code. Um, getting rid of this and this, this is a valid statement inside of Rust. And it's because the difference is in Rust, this is an expression right here. This evaluates to a value based on these conditions. However, in our language and in C-like languages like C, C++, uh, JavaScript, this would not be evaluable. 
this would be a statement and this would be a statement. So you can't have that. So let's define expressions now. For example, a numeric literal is an expression, identifier, and binary expression. So let's define an interface for an expression. Now an expression is going to need to extend the statements like so. Now one thing you'll notice is we're not really adding any new types onto this thing, this expression, but we still want to be able to do this so we can say um, to help with typing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say for TypeScript that we don't really care if there's empty interfaces. Cool. So now we can implement our expressions. In, in the interpreter slash the runtime or compile time, we expect an expression to return a value, unlike a statement, which we don't expect to return a value. So let's just export an interface of binary expression extends expression like so. So a binary expression is a unique thing because it contains recursive data types. For example, um, we can see that a program is somewhat recursive in nature as well. A program is a statement. However, it contains arrays of statements. A binary expression is an expression and it contains a left-hand side of expression, a right-hand side of expression, and an operator, which is just a string in our case. Now, a binary expression is, say, something like 10 minus 5. This is a binary expression. However, something like 10 or like foo minus bar is also a binary expression because the left-hand side is an expression. And that brings us to our last two points. We need to cover numeric literals and identifiers. So let's export interface. Uh, let's call this identifier. And this extends an expression. And in here, let's not forget, we need to add the kind is a binary expression. And down here, we need to do the same thing. The kind for an identifier is simply an identifier. Foo and bar are both identifiers, and this is what allows this to work. A binary expression can contain an expression, which could be a binary expression, an identifier, a literal, a call expression, all that, right? If we had something like this, foo minus bar, right, this is valid binary expression. It's another expression, which just so happens to be a call expression, or x equals 5, um, if we were to wrap it like this, in some languages, this would also be valid. So for an identifier, we want to contain the symbol, which is simply a string. The symbol is like x or foo or something like that. And the last type we want to implement is of type numeric literal. A numeric literal is also an expression. The symbol doesn't exist. Instead, we contain the value, which is a number. And the kind is numeric literal, like so. And there we go. Now we have defined all of the types we're going to be using in our first um, run through of the parser. Again, in the future, we're going to contain a lot more types, um, probably about 40 or 50 or so. But for now, this is everything we need to get basic mathematical operations up and running, um, including addition, subtraction, multiplication. Um, yeah, so this is going to be really exciting. In the next episode, we'll actually get started by writing our parser and translating text like uh, 45 minus 5 divided by foo. We'll be able to translate something like this into a valid AST. And then in the fourth episode, we will actually be able to implement a basic interpreter that'll translate and actually output a value um, from our AST. So I'll see you guys in the next video.